So, if you assume any rate of improvement at all, then games will be indistinguishable from reality. Or civilization will end. One of those two things will occur. It's yeah. A, Go live in the simulation. Yeah, I mean... It, in the simulation. Some Ready Player One type shit that's real. That seems... Before describing a grand idea, we usually start by giving its definition. But the topic which I'm about to speak does not have a clear explanation. Take YouTube for example. It uses artificial intelligence to recommend you the videos which you'll be most interested to watch. It does this by looking at your watch history and figuring out the type of content you like to watch. On the contrary, Uber uses AI to predict time and areas of ride demands based on the trips you have previously taken. For example, if you leave your home at 8 every morning from the same place, Uber alerts drivers for an upcoming demand from the place where you'll be leaving from. This also reduces fares as the driver has to travel a lesser distance. Now both of these apps use AI totally differently, but the main principle on which it is based on remains the same. During the Second World War, the Nazis had to send messages across battlefields without the Allies tapping into their messaging system. Otherwise, the Polish would have been able to see the bomb drop coordinates. So the Germans had to develop a sophisticated encryption system to avoid that. Arthur Schobius, an electrical engineer, came up with a cipher machine named as the Enigma. This machine turns meaningful words like finer Bildschirm into gibberish. So the people interfering with the radio systems would not be able to figure out what the word actually means. And this is not just pen and paper encryption, like binary or Morse code. This machine can encrypt a word or a sentence in 158 quintillion, 962 quadrillion, 555 trillion, 217 billion, 862 million, 360 thousand flat different ways. That's a lot for a human to go through. While normal pen and paper encryption can encrypt in just one or two ways. To put that number into perspective, if that number gave the magnitude of distance, then that distance would be comparable to 13 billion times the distance between the Sun and Pluto. Or 4 times the number of ways you can scramble a Rubik's Cube. To break the enigma, Alan Turing with a team of code breakers built the bomb. A machine which goes through all the possible permutations of the Enigma cipher to convert gibberish back into plain German. The only input given to the machine was the starting position of the rotors. Rest of the work was done by the machine itself. Alan Turing built a machine which could learn by itself. The bomb can be seen as the first self-learned machine. It was able to crack codes just like humans could. A machine which learns by its own mistakes. And that's what machine learning is at a very rudimentary level. Later in 1950, Alan Turing published the paper starting with this line. And I quote, I propose to consider the question, can machines think? So in this video, let's try to get one step closer to answering that question. If you take a few photos of a cat, say of its back and its face, and you construct an algorithm saying that these are the features of a cat. Now if it sees any other photo matching the features of a cat, like of its whiskers or its cat eyes, then it will categorize the photo as a photo of a cat. But the algorithm can make mistakes. For example, if you feed it with a photo of a hamster, it will check if the photo contains whiskers or cat-like eyes. Now a hamster does have whiskers, so it will categorize the hamster as a cat. To eliminate this problem, we give conditions to the algorithm. For example, for an animal to qualify as a cat, it should both have whiskers and cat-like eyes. Or just providing the algorithm with a bunch of photos of different cats and letting it learn by itself. The algorithm gets better and better after each failure. 
hence learning from its mistakes just like humans do and therefore we call it machine learning the concept of learning from mistakes is known as back propagation learning and is the foundation on which artificial intelligence is based on and that's one aspect of ai which makes it more like a human if i had to define machine learning in a single sentence then i'd say it is simply using data to answer questions now this definition can be split into two parts using data is what we will refer to as training while well, answering questions is referred to as predictions based on the data which we have provided in our case the photos of the cats was the data and the predictions was whether it was a cat or not machine learning is used more often in your daily lives than you think every time you search something on google when you order food online when you pull your selfie camera out when you apply a snapchat filter to your face when you book tickets for a flight a train or even a cab or even while using google translate all of those use machine or deep learning in some way or the other unless you haven't been living under a rock just like i have been since the past couple of months you might have heard the word deep learning tossed around a lot in conversations about ai in simple words deep learning is machine learning on steroids deep learning is a special kind of machine learning which is inspired by the working of our brain cells that are neurons we use codes and hardware to create artificial neurons geeks call them nodes here's how it compares to an actual neuron now if you take these nodes put them in a line and lay them up you would make yourself a neural network you can compare a neural network to a limbic system although they cannot nearly be as functional as a human brain well not yet What's the difference you ask? What's the difference between machine learning, deep learning and artificial intelligence in the first place? Don't get confused, they're all the same. Deep learning is a subset of machine learning which is a subset of AI. Here are some interesting things you could do with deep learning. Let's say you have a painting up on your wall and you really want to paint yourself a picture like that, but you can't really paint, you are just a photographer. Here is what you can do. You can go out at night, take a photo of a scenery, upload that photo to your computer, transfer the style of the picture on the wall to your photo with something called as convolutional neural networks and you are done. Thousands of rupees saved on art classes. This is known as image style transfer. The computer basically learns the style of the painting of the artist and applies that to whatever you feed it with. If you give it a picture of the starry night then it will learn the style of Vincent van Gogh and if you give it a photo of Mona Lisa then it will learn the style of Leonardo da Vinci Pictures get boring after some time what if we take a video extract every frame out of it then style transfer each frame one by one and then combine all of that back into a video Well, it doesn't work so well on faces. Well, at least I tried. Let's just try it on something else now. EB Synth, an open source free program, does all of that for you. Here's how it works. You provide two or more keyframes from the video telling the algorithm that this is how you want the entire video to look like. Now the program takes each frame of the video and style transfers it the way you want it to look like from the keyframes you just provided. Then it outputs the video as individual frames. As we know, video is a collection of rapidly changing images at roughly around 24 images a second. You can use any video editor to convert the frames into an MP4 or any video file format. The applications of these algorithms are huge. You can make a real movie look like an animated one with much less efforts, and video memes will get a quality revamp. His rose from the movie Titanic wearing a mask. Face app it's an app launched a few years ago which uses pattern recognition and neural style transfer to create ultra realistic versions of your face you can make yourself look old young you can make yourself smile and what not and not gonna lie all of them look pretty convincing i was thinking what if you could combine face app image style transfer and db synth all together is this how i'm gonna look when i'm old 
while we are in the topic of faces, let's talk about deep fakes. With these softwares, you can make a person say things which they never said before. Like, I don't know, Killmonger was right, or uh, Ben Carson is in the sunken place, or how about this, simply, President Trump is a total and complete dipshit. That looks extremely real, which is scary, because it isn't real. It basically superimposes the facial expressions of a person say A to a person say B. You might have seen the basic principle at work on these silly Snapchat filters. They detect faces by checking the differences in brightness in a photo of a face. Apart from this, they train the algorithm by feeding it with thousands of faces manually pointing out that these are the eyes, these are the lips and so on. Then using these tracking points, Snapchat superimposes the filter of your choice on your face. All of that to have a doggy nose. Deepfake is a portmanteau of the word deep learning and fake. But how do these softwares work? Well, firstly, you need to record yourself talking or acting in some way. Then you need to collect as many videos or photos of the celebrity you want to swap your face with. The software which I'm using is called Deepface Lab. This is the algorithm going through all the photos of me and the actor which I provided. And it's trying to recreate our faces on its own. And here, it's trying to match my facial expressions with the actor's face. This takes time. And the time taken is directly proportional to the amount of processing power your computer has. So yeah, you cannot run deep fakes on any laptop or computer. That you're sick of running as fast as you can? Because if you'd get there quicker if you were a man? If, a, if you were a man, you wouldn't be famous. You wouldn't be rich. Here's what a deep fake of Benjamin Shapiro's face on mine, which took about 30 hours, 5 tries and 5 all-nighters to run on my computer. The worst thing that you can do is focus on negativity. It won't spare you from the cage of death, the pain of disease, the cruelty of time, the odd shell of human nature, and the eventual loss of everything you've ever held dear. I'm sorry if I hurt your feelings, but facts don't care about your feelings. If I, as a 16-year-old with limited resources and hardware, can create half as decent deepfakes, then you can only start to imagine what people can create with advanced and expensive hardware. Deepfake softwares are really powerful, and as they say, with great power comes great responsibility. We're all, we're all feeding this network without questions and answers. We're all collectively programming the AI. With great power comes great bullshit. While there are groundbreaking applications of deepfakes like this example of Princess Leia from Star Wars Rogue One, the upper one is painstakingly made with manual input with an extremely expensive computer worth hundreds of thousands of dollars and the other one is made by an average guy with an average computer. There's hardly any difference. On the dark side, as I mentioned before, you can make anyone say anything. You can make politicians say some things which they would never say in real life. Now this doesn't go only for politicians. Deepfakes can be used as criminal evidence, to threaten someone or to prove a crime which they never committed. Or it could also be used to cover up a crime. The possibilities are endless. With all of that said, now the question is, how do you spot deepfakes? Well, for some of the fake videos, you can just point out and say that this isn't real, because they don't look real. But for the ones which do, you can train an AI to spot deep fakes, hence creating a self-destructive loop, fighting AI with AI. The morality of this is dubious, but you cannot deny its inevitability. From fake stories to fake drawings to fake photos and now to fake videos. In retrospective, how can anyone prove if anything is real? How can you prove that you are real? How can I prove that I'm real? You can't stop the misuse of technology, you can only be aware of it, don't try to fix it, because if you can't fix what's broken, you'll only go insane. And as I say, think awesome. Lay it, lay it down, let me see your hand, show me what you got, you're always talking, but you're not playing, it doesn't match your face, gotta find my way. From this place, can you tell?